Hello, I'm Kyla Bercy and welcome back to High Kyliber, where I'm realizing my potential while protecting my mental. Thank you for showing up today as I continue to invite you to feel real still. Feel all that you are, show up as who you are today, your authentic self, always and forever. And be present, because you can get caught up in the past, what we could have done, should have done, would have done, or we can be so anxious about the future that we forget what's in front of us. I'm a little late, not gonna lie. It is the Monday, March 11th, I believe. Um, is that the day? Yeah. That I'm supposed to record, well, have released this episode already. But I'm on spring break. I had a company this weekend and I also wasn't feeling well. So I'm giving myself a little grace. And I also recorded a little behind the scenes footage. I had some prior but I haven't edited it yet. So hopefully you get two videos in one tomorrow or whenever these two come out, probably tomorrow. I'm going to edit these tonight, get them up. And so you're gonna vlog in episode 13. What is better than that? Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm on spring break. It's Monday. I don't have class on Monday anyways. Like, or Fridays, so I've been having four day weekends all semester and it's been great. The only thing different this time is I'm not going to have to get up at 8 a.m. in the morning. I have all day Tuesday to relax, but I'm probably going to go home to Nashville and I don't know what I'm doing for spring break just yet. Why do we to the last minute, Kyla? Well, let's see, I couldn't make up my mind and I knew my family my mom and my two aunties. I'm from Tennessee, from Nashville. I'm not gonna pretend like I say aunt, just to be proper for the two or this podcast, I say auntie. My aunties came down to Memphis from Nashville down. They came to Memphis from Nashville, visited me. They also brought my little nephew, Bryce. He's three, he's so cute. He's the best. He thinks we're siblings for some reason, like we, are on the same level because he's bullying me always but that's okay i love him regardless but i'm debating between disney these okay these are from october there is a backstory here which kind of ties into this episode just kind of a conversation of me talking about my college experience as always that's what this is about but so i'm thinking about disney or new york the new york was sponsored Things. I was supposed to go for my birthday last year, for my 21st, but I ended up spending it in Nashville on Broadway, which was great. I had a good time with my family, but I'm trying to go back to New York. I haven't been since high school. And Disney, I was in Florida twice last year. Once I was right next to Disney World, had a discounted ticket offer and everything, but they were about to close and I just decided to stay at Disney Springs and this is where I got those these ears from. It was October and I wanted a Halloween thing. So hopefully next episode I will be recording it wherever I am, not here, which is different as you see. I'm in a different spot in my apartment. I'm on my couch. Guess what? I bought a couch, my first well, one of my first big girl purchases. I got it from Ikea. My parents have taught me don't get the most expensive thing. Don't get the cheapest either. Find something in the middle. This is great. It is long enough for me to lie down flat if I want to. I'm 5'10", so that's not too important, but kind of nice. I got one pillow so far because I want to test it out, see what matched. Because at first, this backdrop, was in that corner. If you see the vlog, you'll see where it was in the vicinity of my apartment. I've also posted pictures of what my setup looked like. I may take a picture of this one, but this is getting into my phase of transformation, moving around, experimentation. 
which I've been told that's what your 20s is about, that's what college is about, that's what life is about. We're all doing this for the first time. Yes, we're here with each other to give each other advice, but at the end of the day, we have to figure it out for ourselves. What works best for us, what do we want to do? And as much as I love this art job, I'm gonna keep it around because it's sentimental to me in this moment of my life of starting this podcast. It was also gifted to me by my beautiful cousin, Anissa, who I shouted out for, I think, in the first episode or so. But I folded it because I wanted to do something different, change it up. I wanted to be comfy. I have on a hoodie today. You'll see my process of getting ready also in the vlog. But I just wanted to come on here and have a chat about what's been sitting on my mind. And that has been, have I had a fulfilled college experience. Meaning, did I get more out of college or will I get more out of college? Wait, I'm gonna get it right. Will have, have I gotten more out of college than just an education, just a degree? You go to college, you get educated, yes. However, a lot of people value the college experience, which is why so many people are adamant about going to HBCUs or their parents' alma maters or whatever they attach a good experience to. That's what it's about, not just what will give you the best education, what will give you the best experience. After going to a private school, my last two years of high school, I really wanted to go to an HBCU. I applied to majority HBCUs, Rhodes, and I think two other schools were PWIs, and that's just how it worked out. The money was over here. I wanted to go to Spelman College. They only gave me what I had to pay at Rhodes, which was nothing, so <laughs> I ultimately went with this school. It's had its ups and downs. I'm not here to talk about the college as an institution, I think it, they did their job giving me an education. I got along with the professors. I enjoyed the small, intimate classrooms, class sizes, I mean. And I can go into this specific college if anyone's interested, I guess, Rhodes College. But have I gotten the most out of college? Have I lived it up? No, I haven't. And I was sitting thinking, I wish I would have done more. But then I also thought back to each year of college. I've kept a journal and I was going through it. I can say I experienced some type of depression <laughs> each year of college. And I say that with a giggle because it's almost like scary, but it's also like my real life, what happened to me. First there was roaches and isolation, freshman year and then sophomore year. All I'm gonna say is relationships aren't easy and I was also playing golf and that threw me into a spiral where I finally got help, got me a therapist whom I still see to this, to this day, I have an appointment tomorrow. And junior year, got hurt, couldn't go back to the golf game. Senior year, it's kind of been cyclic, meaning I've had a lot of alone time and a lot of times I think about what have I gotten out of college experience wise. I joined a few clubs, went to a few events and using few literally to say that I really didn't do much. And part of me wishes like, oh, what if I partied more? What if I made more friends? And this all came from some friends, well, they're not my friends, but people that I have to work with in groups in certain classes and I haven't had a social media or Instagram specifically since freshman year. I haven't been active on Instagram honestly until this summer. So sophomore year, let me get my story straight. <laughs> All right, so I've had an Instagram before. Growing up when it came out, it was the hottest thing out. So I was on it. Then freshman year, I deleted my Instagram. We had to talk about why, I just needed a break. Thought it would be better without one. And I made another one 
in the spring of my sophomore year, but it kind of just sat dormant. And then it started to pick up fresh, not freshman year, junior year, where I just used it occasionally, but I didn't post myself. I didn't really follow anyone at school. I didn't really socialize. And then this year, so this summer, before senior year, I got active on there. I had like 60 followers of people I knew just accumulated since sophomore year. And I started posting my vegan meals and where am I going with this? I said all of this to say that I started becoming friends on Instagram and social media with people around me, my peers, and actually seeing the fun. The fun, I put in quotes because we all know things on the internet, social media are very, should be loosely interpreted about the truth, what's actually happening behind the scenes. But I also know the type of culture, like I hear things and know the culture of my school or other schools where people work hard, well, if they work hard or not, they play hard. So they have fun, they go to parties, they have those friends where they can have dinners, they can invite their friends over to their apartment, they can have movie nights. I haven't had that. And here I am, senior year, spring break, not on a senior trip with a group of friends, we're living it up our last time. And that kind of hurts my heart a little bit because it's like what you would think would be ideal in this situation, depending on who you're asking, again. But I think it's okay for me to say that that makes me sad because I'm considering trips. One, I'm considering to go with my parents to New York one if they want to go, but I waited till the last minute to decide. So I most likely want to go to Disney. I've been wanting to go for a while. I haven't been to the park since I was seven six seven that was the only time i went and it's been a big part of my childhood i don't care about the capitalistic analysis of it i just think they do a good a good job not trying to curse a good job with you know instilling happiness imagination and children adults because i'm an adult now but it's been a big part of my life and i just want to have some fun this last go round in college and it's winding down, it's getting close. I'm grateful for all that has happened throughout college. I'm not leaving with what I thought I would have left with on the experience side. As I mentioned in Eagles Fly Alone, I have accepted it, but it doesn't mean that I can't feel. So I've accepted that I have not socialized some of my childhood friends, previous friends, kind of grown apart and I haven't really been successful at making new friends, retaining friends, or having, I guess whatever I imagine in my head when it comes to a, a moment like this, to actually have an experience with a group of people where you have a lifelong memory and I'm as good as a friend as I could get for myself but we all need that socialization and I know I'm not alone I know there are studies coming out that there are people people who have less friends than ever now whether it's because of the pandemic or social media but loneliness is real it doesn't go away all the time you can make efforts to go out socialize but Sometimes that takes time, and for me it's taking time. I haven't really gotten out much this semester specifically, and I had mentioned the depressive kind of pattern throughout college or low moments, maybe not deep depression where I felt myself losing touch because I use those slow moments to feel them at times and see what's happening so we can take care I can, as we need Kyla, <laughs> I can take care of myself in the best way that I need in that moment. So I think I'm coming to acceptance with what my college experience has been for one reason and one reason only at this moment, because I know my experiences and at those moments, 
throughout college. I, I didn't want to go party. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to hang out. I was focused so much on school. Being the best student, I was focused to become the best golfer. I remember I had a roommate my sophomore year. We were both kind of experiencing the post-COVID isolation given that we were on campus, but it was hard to socialize. And she tried to be my friend. And I told her, girl, I'm trying to transfer. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm focused. And so the reality of my college experience was an intense focus where I put success, my future, above the moment. And this has been challenging for me to change my perspective in the last semester of college or last year of college because it seems so foreign to not be excited about school anymore or actually further acknowledge the grief that I may have rushed over or the sadness that I covered up with school or with other things that could fix the things that could fix the void of certain things. And I've moved those things aside. I'm still showing up to class on time, mostly, but I'm doing my work. I did my midterms well, I feel like. Did my best at least. I'm showing up despite my moments of loneliness and trying to give myself grace. And I know this is all new. But I share that to say that I don't want to have any regrets about college. And I don't think I'm supposed to. I think I can learn from my experiences and observe what has occurred and how my path unfolded for me to get to this moment. I'm so grateful to be here. I didn't think I would be in this position in my life when I started college or last year or last week. No, but I I've The most important things that I've gotten out of college and developed have been self-discipline, consistency, hard work. And those three things are valuable when it comes to the workforce, mastering the art of survival, how are you going to feed yourself, and I feel like I'll be fine there. Kyla. Future Kyla, I'm telling you, you're gonna be fine. I trust you to do what you need to do as far as putting yourself in the positions, showing up, giving yourself a break, but us, me right now, I've been enjoying this moment to be present and to find peace with what has been and where I am and to be grateful for the relationship that I've developed with myself to be able to be alone, but also understand that it's okay to want connection outside of my parents, my family, my boyfriend. They're not here. So that communal aspect has to be worked on for me. And that's okay. And speaking of community, I shared earlier my family Friday. I enjoyed them because I wasn't feeling very well on Thursday. I had to cancel an event. And that just reminded me of the power in coming together with people. Because I planned to get this couch all by myself up here. Because you know, Ikea, you build stuff yourself. So I imagined that it would be boxes that I could carry or a trolley truck up here and have this all done before they got here. Well, when they got here, I was leaving my apartment, like I'm about to run some errands. So I called my mom and checked in. She's like, did we just pass you? And I was like, 
I don't know, but I guess so. So anyway, they ended up helping me and I wouldn't have been able to do that by myself. So I'm very grateful for that. We had a movie night. We went shopping. They went shopping. I tagged along. We ate some good food. And it's beautiful to see them in their... I don't mean this disrespectfully, but in their age, in their wisdom, growing on their, as my dad says in an analogy to golf, you have the front nine, which is parallel to your early phases of life. And you have the back nine where you're still living, but you're wrapping up your round or your life in that analogy. And they're on the back nine. And it's beautiful to see, they may not be it's hard for me to tell because I'm not God. We're in the back nine that they are, but I'm grateful for each one of them and my family unit that make me feel less alone. Like I talk to my parents more than probably the average college students. <laughs> like I call them like three times to four times a day and I will answer their calls too because they are home for me outside of this home that I'm creating here. So that's my reflection, my updates. I don't know if I had a punch with a conclusion, but it's really to say that I'm home with my college experience. I'll still keep reflecting on it, but I would not harbor and pin, like punish myself for not having friends or socializing or having that dream, you know, spring break trip or whatever I put in my head to perpetuate something and feed into that negative mind because we all have that choice so I don't know where I'm going to go I think you know what I'm going to make up my mind the funds are there could have had a little discount if I did it earlier but my parents are like just enjoy it go for it enjoy your last spring break so I think I'm going to go to Disney book me a room maybe for the weekend, I don't know, but I may take you all along and upload it, upload some photos, or just tell you about it. We'll see. I'm just going with the flow in this moment. I'm going to enjoy this week, enjoy my family, enjoy myself, and I hope you do too. I don't know if I'm going to get to this, but this is my vision board. I'm going to put it in front of the camera so you can see. I thought I'd share this with you because Having a vision is truly so powerful. Writing your ideas down. I think that I said this last episode, two episodes ago about declaring and knowing what you want. And I'm still figuring out what I want, but this is a reminder to me that if you have a vision, you work hard. This isn't my first vision board from college, but it's one I made in the past year and it's not too bold. But I'm just so proud of myself and I hope you take time to acknowledge that for you too. To be proud of yourself and the effort that you're actually putting in because we are, can be our number one critic, especially when you feel those moments of lowness and you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, but you have to remind yourself the things that you are doing that you may brush over and say, oh, I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, but you could be so burned out where it's hard to get up sometimes, it's hard to shower, it's hard to feed yourself, it's hard to get dressed, it's hard to get to work on time, it's hard to want to pull yourself together or actually pull yourself together to get up and have a normal week while you're struggling with something that's on your mind or something that happened to you or you're just not feeling well. So slow down, take some time to reflect. I'll let you know where I go. And I got, I'm glad that I got that out in this medium, in this way. I know that what I was going to say and wanted to say as far as finding peace in my experience. But it's good to hear it out loud and say it's okay. Because God really have so much more life to live and I can share more of my experiences as I grow and be here with you. Because that's my goal, is to be alongside, to where you don't feel like a hierarchical relationship with me. I haven't, I'm not older, I haven't lived to tell you from my experience. I'm still figuring it out. 
but this is my mindset now and I hope me starting at this mindset trying to be graceful think positive build a solid foundation that some people don't acquire or haven't rebuilt until they're 60 or older so I hope you're enjoying these episodes have a great week Thank you for tuning in. If you're on YouTube, watch my vlog. It's going to come out. Promise. You're listening to this on audio. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope you're able to find peace with whatever is on your mind. Any regrets that want to try to creep in there and take over your joy. Remember, you are responsible for your own happiness. Everything else is just a compliment to it so have a beautiful week thank you like comment and subscribe if you're on youtube please rate this if you're enjoying the audio only version all right i'm done